I will just um, chant a few mantras for my uh, invocation uh, and then we will start. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakkada Mahyam Dadati Swapadantikam one day, Shri Guru, Shri Yuta Padakamalam, Shri Guru, Vaishnavam, Shri Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sagana Ragunatan, Vitantam, Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Savadutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Jaitanya Devam, Shri Radha, Krishna Padan, Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchan Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha kalpata rubhyascha, kripa sindubhya evacha, patita nam pavare bhyo, vaishnave bhyo, namo namaha. Namo vishnu padaya, krishna preshtaya bhutale, shrimate bhakti vedanta swamin niti namine. Namaste. Namaste Saraswate Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavati Pashatya Deshna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Hare Krishna So first of all I would like to thank all of you for in, uh, having me as part of this association today All of you have been as I have heard that regularly meeting on this call and every Sunday have been hearing from many senior devotees. So, so you have heard from many very advanced devotees, sannyasis and spiritual leaders. I don't know what I can share here, uh, which will be something new and inspiring, but this is an opportunity Yes. Yeah, should I put myself on? Okay. Okay, I hope this um, helps. Let me see. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm sorry for a bit of delay because uh, I had some internet connection which I was trying, but was not connecting. Um, so today is also a very auspicious day of uh, Mahashivaratri. And we all, as we all know, that Lord Shiva is a very special and important personality for all of us, being the being one of the Mahajanas and great devotee of the Lord. We hear from our Acharyas, Vaishnavanam uh, Yathasam Shambhu is one is the greatest devotee among all the Vaishnavas. He is the greatest. So on this auspicious occasion, we also seek his blessings by chanting one prayer, which is uh, uh, prayer which 
is written by Śrīla Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Ohek Shetra Pala Shiva Tumi Doya Mai Krishna Bhakti Deha More Hariya Sarai. He says that, O oh, Kshetra Pal, Lord Shiva is a Kshetra Pal. Wherever there is a dham or temple of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, Lord Shiva also resides there as a Kshetra Pal. He guards that dham. So, Tumi Daya Maya is very merciful. Krishna Bhakti Deha More. Please be compassionate on me and please award me devotion to Lord Krishna. So this is how devotees pray to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva has two aspects to his personality. And uh, one aspect is... Uh, as a great devotee of the Lord. And the other aspect is he awards material benediction and also is in charge of various affairs of this material world. So most of the people in the world who worship Lord Shiva, they usually approach him for the second purpose. Like Prabhuji has lost connection. Clear audible. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Sorry, uh, again, it called dropped off. Uh, so I was mentioning that uh, the Lord Shiva has two aspects, and devotees approach him for the primary reason of he being the great devotee of the Lord, and not for the secondary reason that he awards various material benedictions, for which most of the people in this world approach Lord Shiva. So, as devotees, uh, we glorify Lord Shiva because he is a great devotee of the Lord, and he is very, very dear to the Lord. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, we also read that. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on his South India visit, and he visited many temples of Lord Shiva on the way in Andhra, uh, Mallikarjun temple, and uh, Kanchi Shiva, Shiva Kanchi in Kanchipuram, and many others. It's written all in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. And he chanted and glorified. Uh, the Lord chanted the holy name of Krishna in that temple and made many devotees chant the names of Krishna there. So this is how he preached. Even Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur also in his South India Yatra, he visited all these temples. Sometimes he used to get this question also that, oh, you are a devotee of Lord Krishna, why are you visiting Lord Shiva temple? He used to answer that, Vaishnava Nam Yatha Shambhu. He is the greatest Vaishnava, and we come here to glorify him. So on one occasion, Lord Shiva, while he's speaking to um, Mother Parvati, he uh, says this famous words, Ram, Rame, Ti, Rame, Ti, Rame, Rame, Mano, Rame, Sahasranam, Tattulyam, Rama, Nama, Varanane. That chanting the names of Lord Ram once is thousand times more beneficial than chanting one name of Vishnu. Uh, so that way, basically glorifying the name of Lord Ram, which Lord Shiva always chants. So, <clears throat> so uh, in this way, we seek the blessings of Lord Shiva to that we develop a taste for chanting the holy name. And with this, we can move on uh, on our topic. So having attained this human form of life, we all have been very fortunate to have received this association of devotees where we understand that the purpose of life is to 
come out of this cycle of birth and death and develop pure devotion to Lord Krishna and engage in his loving devotional service. This kind of understanding is very, very rare and uh, very rarely a living entity gets to understand this. There are so many living entities in this world and very few are human beings. And out of all the human beings, most of them are caught up in some other conceptions of life. Everyone has some or something or the other, some understanding of life. But it's very rare that a living entity uh, gets to understand this real constitutional position and uh, the real identity as a servant of the Lord. So, and to reestablish ourselves in that position where we can eternally serve the Lord in loving devotion, there are so many processes prescribed in our scriptures and by our acharyas. Like hearing Krishna Katha, uh, visiting holy places, worshipping the Archa Vigraha, uh, serving the devotees, chanting the holy name. Essence of all of this is to glorify the Lord. In all these ways, we ultimately glorify the Lord. And the primary process to do that in this age, as recommended by the uh, Lord, is to chant the holy name. Sri Bhakti Binod Thakur says that, Prabhu Tumi Jivara Mangala Chinta Kari Kali Yuge Nama Sange Swayam Avatari. Shaitanya Mahaprabhu, being very concerned about the living entities, he advented uh, with the holy name to deliver the, uh, the living entities. So out of all the processes, chanting the holy name is at the core of it. And that is why our process is also called the Sankirtan process, Sankirtan movement, Sankirtan dharma in this Kali Yuga. This is the uh, Kalavta Dhari Kirtanath. Now, what is the meaning of this mantra that we chant? We all uh, <clears throat> have heard it so many times that it's basically a, a, a um, calling out to the Lord to engage us in his service. The mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. All the words are in Sambodhan. Uh, means it's like addressing someone. So we are saying, Hey Hare, Hey Krishna, Hey Rama, in this way. So it's, a, it's an address. But nothing is mentioned in the mantra about what we are addressing for. So that meaning is hidden in the mantra. Sometimes small child... Uh, cries out for the mother, just says, mom, mom, or mama. Uh, so it, it just, the child is just saying, ma, or mother, or mom. But behind that word, there is a meaning. Maybe he needs food, he has some pain, he needs some attention. So that, that he's not saying that I need food, I didn't, he's just crying. So just, but the mother understands because uh, mother understands the child is crying means child needs something. There is something he, the child is looking for. Similarly, this mantra is just like crying, it was like calling out the names of the Lord, Hare uh, and Krishna and Rama. But the meaning as told by our Acharyas is that, oh, my dear Lord, Please engage me in your eternal service. Please keep, give me shelter. So this is the meaning. Now if we chant this mantra, and we all have been chanting, and we struggle to keep the right mood, and this is something that is, uh, everybody faces this problem. 
and it's not a problem for one month, two months, it's a problem for years and for a whole lifetime. So uh, this is a question that we always um, um, encounter and get asked and that how can we chant in the right mindset, uh, with the right mood? So, and why is our mind so distracted that we can't focus on chanting? The mind goes everywhere. <clears throat> so for this, there are so many practices that have been suggested and prescribed and we must have heard so many things. I'm broadly speaking, we can put them into categories. One set of practices is external practices and other internal practices. External practices refers to the things that we can do externally to avoid distractions. And um, so that our body is in a state of minimized distractions and we can focus. So that, how, that is important. But that's not all in all. Um, we also need to have some internal practices to be able to focus more. So for that, we need to understand that the biggest trouble is our mind. And uh, we <clears throat> face this difficulty because our mind gets attracted and pulled by all the worldly things that we engage in in our day-to-day -day activities. So if rest of the day we are engaged in things that are not in line with our devotional process, then definitely we are going to have difficulty when we chant. Because we can't isolate the, uh, uh, the, the time of chanting from the rest of our day. And we say, okay, this is the time of chanting and this is where we can chant attentively and the rest of the time we can do whatever we want. Uh, this, this doesn't work because we have this whole integrated one single life and everything we speak, everything we do, everything we think has to be in sync, in harmony. If they are not connected, uh, then naturally we will have difficulty. So th there is um, um, there are some nice quotes regarding chanting. One of them uh, is uh, when we chant, we should switch off our our own world and enter Krishna's world, switch on Krishna's world. So having that understanding that this chanting is when we are going to call out to the Lord, then the, we are entering in a different world and we should tune up in our own world. Just like when we go to meet some big personality in his office, then we keep our mobile phones away. And not only that, we also try to uh, keep all of our other anxieties and other things away and try to be present in, uh, in that association of that personality and be fully attentive to him. So leaving everything behind and having this understanding that we are going to pray to the Lord. So uh, the Having this just, just this consciousness also helps when we chant that we are calling out to the Lord. So if we, there's also one important quote that if we ring, then how can we expect Krishna to listen to our chant? And we don't care about what we are chanting, then uh, how can we expect Lord to listen to our chanting? So having some of these thoughts um, does help. But the very important thing why we face difficulty in chanting is actually uh, it's, it's, it is connected to the very deep understanding of 
um, uh, what we think who we are and where our attachments are. Having very strong material attachments is definitely going to be a big hindrance in our chanting. Just like in the prayer of Kunti Maharani, uh, it's a very nice words, which very famous words, where uh, Shri Prabhupada talks about chanting in the purport. Janmai Shwarya Shuta Shri Yedaman Madapuman Naivar Hatta Vidhatum Vai Tuamakin Chanagocharam. Kunti Maharani is saying that Yapuman. Janmaishwarya Shuddha Shrevi Edamana Bhavati Edamana Madha Bhavma Karoti Saha Tuamakinchan Gocharam Abhidhatum Na Arhati. The one who is very intoxicated uh, by high birth, uh, opulence, high education, beauty will have difficulty approaching you with sincere feelings. Let me read the purport and the translation here. The translation goes like this. My Lord, your Lordship can easily be approached, but only by those who are materially exhausted. One who is on the path of material parentage, great opulence, high education, and bodily beauty, can't approach you with sincere feelings. Being materially advanced means taking birth in an aristocratic family and possessing great wealth and education and attractive personal beauty. All materialistic men are mad after possessing all these material opulences. And this is known as the advancement of material civilization. But the result is that by possessing all these material assets, one becomes artificially puffed up, intoxicated by such temporary possessions. Consequently, such materially puffed up persons are incapable of uttering the holy name of the Lord by addressing him feelingly, O Govinda, O Krishna. So there is more in the purport, but uh, the, the essence is that if we are very much caught up in the material activities and we actually feel very safe and secure uh, by taking shelter of these material things. So it's not just that Janu Aishwarya Shruti Shrivi, it's also the combination of all these and the extensions of all these. And the whole world is actually uh, just running around all these things. So if we are very much caught up in these things, then it, we, we will not be able to chant with sincere feelings. Now this question may arise what to do. We are householders, most of us, and we have families and children to take care. So we have to be in the uh, world and doing something, to take care of all these things. But this problem is not there just with those who are uh, who have these responsibilities and taking care of families, but also those who are in uh, temples and ashrams, they also have this difficulty. The problem is not just about doing these external jobs and this, it's about where we seek shelter. Uh, we may do all these things because it's our duty and it's important and necessary, but within the deep uh, depth of our heart, are we feeling shelter, sheltered at the lotus feet of Krishna? Are we feeling sheltered in his protection? Or are we feeling sheltered uh, in the, the money that we are earning or in the other um, social circle that we have or all the other facilities that we have? If we are feeling very safe because of all these things, uh, then so we will definitely have a difficulty in chanting. So if only if we are feeling helpless in this material world, when we really see the futility of the world, we are able to see the temporariness in everything that we do. 
and the whole world is doing. And we really feel helpless that the time is passing by and uh, a, a very soon a day will come when we will have to leave our body. And this is the time that Krishna has given us to take his full shelter. So with this understanding when we pray to the Lord, uh, then we can actually advance and uh, sincerely chant the holy name. So this is the mood with which to chant when we are really seeking his shelter. Uh, that's a nice statement in this regard that the source of our livelihood is not the source of our maintenance. We, we generally, these people think, oh, I have a nice source of livelihood so I can maintain myself. So what a devotee should understand is, yes, we have a source of livelihood because that is part of our occupational duty and we need to do that. But we should understand that actually Krishna maintains everybody. I should not depend on my source of livelihood and have this understanding that if I have a nice source of livelihood, then I can maintain myself. Although I should have a source of livelihood because it's my duty to do that and take care of things, but at the core of our heart, having this feeling that we are actually maintained by Krishna. We depend on him. He takes care. How much I can protect myself everywhere there is, a, there is danger. Padam, padam, tadbi padam, tesham. So it's only by the protection of Krishna we survive, we live, and we should always um, try to cultivate this mood of sh uh, seeking shelter and feeling dependent on him only in this mood, then we uh, can hope to be able to chant feelingly. Um, um, otherwise, um, we may chant, this, chant our rounds as a ritualistic process, complete our rounds and continue with the life. But as is mentioned in the prayers of Maharani Kunti and Shri Prabhupada writes in the purport that uh, uh, when we are very much attracted by the uh, material uh, uh, affected to chant properly. So, and this is something that uh, I am speaking for myself. Uh, I, I read it and then I try to uh, reflect on it and I, I pray that uh, I may develop the right mood and right understanding to chant the holy name. So I think I should stop here. Uh, we are already um, beyond our time because I, I was a little late. But I think this is the, in short, I have to say something. Thank you very much. There's any comment or any uh, other things do it is want to say. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Actually, Prabhuji changed his travel plans to accommodate this talk today. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you also for reminding us how important it is to uh, remember the mood, inner mood, inner prayer while chanting. Um, yeah, we'll open it up for questions. Sindhu Prabhuji has a question. Prabhuji, please ask. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Uh, so this statement was very profound that the source of our livelihood is not our source of maintenance. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, say that uh, how to actually come out of this uh, doership mentality to being in Krasta, you have already mentioned. So when we are you know, going through our livelihood, we, we just... Uh, the worship mentality becomes very profound. So if you can just elaborate a little more on this. Yeah, it's, um, it's not it's, uh, easier said than done. Uh, so this Cultivating this mood is going to be a life from this struggle. And we should happily embrace this 
and understand that there is no shortcut to this and we must struggle whole life to chant nicely so cultivate this mode now um the to keep this right mode it's very important that we regularly read and hear uh from shrimad bhagavatam shri chaitanya charitamrita because when we regularly hear that kind of reinforces the right mood in us and the material association keeps uh, diluting it and that is why we need yeah, with a similar or or more um uh kind of effort we should associate and read and hear so that there is a balance that we can strike to keep the right mood otherwise uh, with the material association um uh, everything gets diluted the only solution that i um, <laughs> i see and i can say is is uh, we have to balance uh hari krishna prabhu danut pram thank you for the uh... a uh, very nice and pretty and we have we have mis- lost prabhu ji now so maybe it's a good idea to uh, write your question on the chat box prabhu ji because he might be able to i don't know how to go about this we have lost him is not here okay mataji 